Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Today's live stream is called Why Do You Play Guitar? And if you looked at the thumbnail, you'll notice that I had a picture of Queen Elizabeth II on there. No disrespect, I meant no disrespect to the Queen. But it's a good question. Did she play guitar? First of all, I want to say that my heart goes out to everyone who is grieving. Let me move that over so I can read it. In Great Britain for the loss of Queen Elizabeth II. She has been the queen since before I was born. And she's the only no monarch that I have known uh, in Great Britain in my whole life. The So my heart goes out to you that are grieving for her loss. Thank you for being here on this uh, live stream today. We're gonna talk about why do you play guitar? and those people that are connected, uh, I'd like to know why you play guitar. Why do you actually, you know, pick up the guitar and play it? I'll tell you why I do. And uh, we'll talk a little bit also about Emerson, Lake and Palmer. And I'm going to play a song that they recorded, but it's also um, very connected to England. Now, I must confess that I do not know much about England and their, how everybody is connected there, like the Scottish and the British and the Welsh and the, I, I really don't know. Um, I don't know how the, um, the Irish, what they think of the Scots right now. I, I don't know what their problems are or questions or how they feel. Uh, but I have always loved their accents, all of the accents from over there. My father was actually born in England in uh, in Yorkshire County near Leeds. Maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, he's my adopted father. But the King's Speech in 2010 with Colin Firth and Jeffrey Rush and Helena Bonham, Bonham Carter, Carter is a brilliant movie about Queen Elizabeth's father and how he became king and the struggles that he had to overcome. Um, you know, his stuttering problem, the problem he had there. I don't know how historically accurate it is, but it motivates me to learn more about the royal family and about what goes on in there and the relationship of King George VI. His brother, I know, abdicated the throne. I think it was pretty accurate in the movie why he abdicated the throne um, and of course that King's speech was about the speech that uh, King George gave before Great Britain entered World War II. Well those are all the facts uh, or the things that I know or that I think I know but um, it's a little sad you know uh, and the idea of the Queen playing an instrument I think it would be great for her to have had played the piano or something uh, even the guitar why not? Uh, there's a, a fellow who, who plays the ukulele. His name is Jake Shimabukuro. He's a ukulele master, if you don't know him. Oh, boy, he's amazing. And uh, he has made a statement about, you know, if everyone played the ukulele, then the world would be a better place. And I have to agree with that. And I believe that is the same about the guitar. You could play the guitar or the ukulele or the piano or the violin or something else. And I think that playing an instrument really helps us to understand uh, life better. Um, in this crazy world where, you know, there's so many people who are confused and angry and disappointed and sad. And I believe that if they would learn an instrument and play it every day, then they would find healing in their hearts and minds. You can prove me wrong if you want to. Let's read the chat. Let's see who's here. Bob is here. Hello, Bob. Lisa is here. Hello, Lisa. Let's see. Mike is here. Hello, Mike. Andrucho. Andrucho. You're going to develop a previous redacted and taught logically topic or just do a direct? I'm not sure exactly what that means. 
Uh, my grandfather on my mother's side was born in England. Oh, okay. Very good. Andrucho, don't be, uh, don't be shy. We love having you here, and go ahead and make comments if you like. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, something called the Glastonbury Hymn. Uh, the hymn, or the poem, was written by William Blake. He was from England. And uh, do you know anything about Emerson, Lake, and Palmer? Uh, I bought a an album when I was younger, when I was very young, uh, called Brain Salad Surgery, and this song was on it. But they called it Jerusalem, and it was amazing. Uh, I really liked it. I really enjoyed Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. And I'm going to play it now for you, um, but I'm not going to play the version that they did. Um, Keith Emerson played, you know, this amazing organ part, you know, synthesizer part at the beginning that was just blew everybody away. But I'm going to play the, the middle part. I actually got some of these chords from the actual hymn. Uh, and then also a mixture of what Emerson, Lake, and Palmer did. And this is, uh, this is how it goes. And did those feet in ancient times Walk upon England's mountains green And was the holy Lamb of God On England's pleasant pastures seen And did the countenance divine Shine forth upon our clouded hills and was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear. Oh, clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Till you turn me on by Greg Lake. Yeah, that's a really good one. This is true. All right. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Glastonbury hymn. Let me close a window here so I can see what's going on. I don't know if my guitar was loud enough at that point. Turn it up a little bit more. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to make sure that everything is uh, recording the way I want it to. Thank you, Bob Andrucho. Thank you very much. Hope I'm saying your name right. All right. Um, if uh, there are people present and you want me to know where you're from, I love to know where you're from. Scotland, Ireland, Indonesia, <laughs> wherever you are. It's great to have you here. Glastonbury Hymn is, uh, or Jerusalem, that uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer did. It's very similar to this. The melody is exactly the same. The chords are, are very similar. I can actually post these if you want, put them in my book. It's about um, a place called Glastonbury, and there was a, a, a legend there that Jesus came when he was, you know, before he started his ministry. He came to England and was there, and it's very, very interesting. I, I became aware of this about 20 years ago. And uh, I went, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've heard, you know, a hymn about that when it talks about, and did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills, and was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Talking about the, the dark, dark satanic mills was talking about the, uh, the um, uh, what was it called? There were, they were digging for iron and, and that kind of thing, and metals. Um, anyway, very interesting. Uh, I'm not going to talk, I'm not going to teach this one exactly, but um, I also want to 
uh, talk a little bit about what we did last week. Was it last week? When we worked on, here, let me pull up. Maybe I'm Amazed by Paul McCartney. I had a question come in about Maybe I'm Amazed. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Nope, it's not there. Is it over here? Do, 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 do. There it is. The question was, um, someone was saying, you know, can you can you bring this, uh, can you do the, the lead, tab out the lead for Maybe I'm Amazed? And, I, st and I, I actually have done that already and posted it at Patreon and, and uh, given it out to my supporters at Subscribestar and also sent it to the people that are on my email list. And that'll be put in my book too. And that was in the original key of B-flat. Let me pull that up so I can look at it. B-flat. I'm going to record the lead chords to this. Same thing as the the verse. Maybe I'm afraid of the way I love you. Maybe I'm amazed at the way you pulled me out of time, hung me on a line. Maybe I'm amazed at the way I really need you. So what I wanted to do there was just to uh, put those chords in, and I'm going to play the lead in the key that they did it. Let me put this guitar away and get my other guitar out, my electric guitar. Be right back. You'll be able to see me, of course. So I'm going to get my electric guitar. I know you can't hear me as well when I'm that far away. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> well, what's interesting about these two songs, um, or these two keys, I put my version in the key of, let's see, theirs is in, starts on a B flat, mine starts on a F. And that's actually a perfect fourth. Uh, you can't hear that. Let's see what we can do here. So B flat and F are a perfect fourth away from each other. Here, let me um, make sure that everything is good here. Stanley, hello Stanley. I love it. He says, I play because it's relaxing and extremely rewarding. <clears throat> I have to say that I'm, I'm disappointed um, in our culture today because we don't have to go out to listen to music anymore. Did I write this down? <clears throat> oh yeah, I wrote this down and I forgot to say it. Um, we don't have a culture uh, of going out and listening to live music like we did 60 years ago. Because when I was young, um, the reason I wanted to play is because I, I wanted to play music. I was inspired by people that I, that I heard. And I thought that was fantastic. Um, you know, a hundred years ago, the only way you could listen to music was to go to a concert or to play it yourself. And so this was, you know, before CDs, we had records, of course, before the internet. The internet is amazing. You know, you can just call up on YouTube just anything you want, uh, pretty much. Uh, of course, videotapes, they came in. And of course, we had television. Um, and it's interesting because television actually became big just before I was born. I mean, it became more big. We had a black and white TV when I first started, but I'm getting off topic here. Uh, but we went out to listen to live music a lot to get a really good musical experience. And it's not exactly what we need to do today, right? You can just call something on, up on your computer. And if you have some good speakers, you can hear to something de pretty decent. Let's see. Um, hey, Sean, how you doing? Dermot, hello. Hello, are you late, Dermot? Sorry, Mike, good evening. <laughs> yep, yep, it's good to see you. Fantastic. 
If you missed the beginning of my, my stream, go back and listen to it later because uh, I talked about the queen and her passing and the sorrow that I felt about that. I still, I know, I'm a little sad about that. Anyway, um, let me check my my tuning really quick. I played my guitar a little earlier, but, you know, it can go out, especially when I bend notes. Okay, I'm going to play... Let's see here. Uh, I need to pick up. No, there it is. I need to get the tab for it. Maybe I'm amazed. There it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this. Uh, play the the lead to maybe I'm amazed in B flat and I'm going to tell you about changing it to the key of F and how it's really cool and really simple okay so I have it written out some of you have already gotten this I'm starting right here on the D string now there's there's a bend there but if you can't do the bend really well you can always slide it up two frets right I'm gonna do the bend see if I can hit it here goes. Two, three, four. basically how um, they did it on the original recording. It's pretty close. Um, so now what happens is that when you play it in a different key, I'm going to change my, let's see here, wait. I'm going to bring up the key that I played it in, which is the key of F. I mean, I started in F. Honestly, it changes keys a bunch of times. So I'm going to re-record this. Maybe I'm amazed. Okay, here it goes. I'm gonna record this now. Maybe I'm amazed at the way you love me all the time. Maybe I'm amazed at the way I love you. Maybe I'm amazed at the way you pull me out of time. Hung me on a line. Maybe I'm amazed at the way that one up. You know what? I'm going to redo that. <laughs> Try it again. Three, four. Do, 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 do. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Maybe if I can concentrate a little bit more here. Yeah, I forgot which chord I was going to. I'll leave it wasn't too bad. E flat, going to B flat. Now G. Two, three, four. Maybe I'm a man. Maybe I'm a lonely man who's in the middle of something that he doesn't really understand. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. So let me show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to pull up this lead again. Now I'm going to look at the same paper, but what happens is instead of starting on the D string, all we have to do, since we're a perfect fourth down and the guitar is tuned in fourths, we just go down to the A string instead of the D string and start in the same spot and play the same exact frets, just one string that way. Isn't it cool? Okay, so let's try it. Two, three, four.
So basically the same thing. I messed that little part. There it is, that last one. I, I messed that one little part up. So it's actually the same lead, just in a on a different string, starting on a different string. It's a little lower. Now that's part of the problem with changing keys like that. If you do it exactly the same way, it might get too low. And uh, let's see what it sounds like with a little distortion. Oop, I don't know if that's going to work. Let me look at my, uh, my levels here, see if it's too loud. Yeah. that distortion sound on there uh, be nice let's see here oh yeah hit the like button thanks Mike how many likes do we have eight likes let's see here I'm just looking at the comments watching from Doha Qatar Qatar interesting hi Bert welcome from Qatar Jeff Wicker hello Jeff you retracted your your message don't know what it meant. I didn't see it. Qatar. 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 I think it's Qatar. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Sean says, I play to relax after a hard day's work. It's great to clear my head and think of something else and so rewarding to play something I know well and then try and learn something new. Um, I find, you know, and Stanley says, I play because it's relaxing and extremely rewarding. I bet all of you or ex exactly the same thing. One of my students told me this week, uh, she's been taking lessons online from me for a couple of years, and she graduated um, this last spring from college, and she said, um, you know, I need to stop taking guitar, I don't have any time. And um, talked to her father just a little bit, and he's like, yeah, she's not working, you know, she doesn't have a job yet. She is preparing for, you know, a marathon and that kind of thing. And um, the idea of stop playing, I mean, you can do that. You can put your guitar down and hang it on the wall or put it in the corner, and it will stay there, and it will not care if you pick it up or not. That's, that's kind of cool. Hey, Dermot. <laughs> no problem. Um, the, the guitar is wonderful. Playing a musical instrument is fantastic because you can always go back to it. And I've done this before in my life, too. I mean, there was a, a period um, when I was 20 years old. For a couple of years, I played the guitar maybe three times. And then after I got back from doing some service for a couple of years on a mission, um, I started playing piano like crazy. And for about two and a half years, I played the piano like two to three hours a day, learning piano, studying it from a concert pianist. And then I picked up, after that, I picked up the guitar. And I, then I had a a um, commitment to play a half an hour a day on piano and half an hour a day on the guitar. That was my commitment that I made to myself. I had two part-time jobs, which actually balances out to a full-time job. I was married. I had a baby with one on the way, I think it was. And, um, you know, I mean, life was busy, but I, you know, made a commitment. This is what I'm going to do minimum every day. And sometimes you get the, the timer out and you set it and it's like okay you know I am going to do this no matter what and so I would do 30 minutes every day on the guitar and on the piano and I kept pro uh, progressing and this is what you can do but you don't have to do 30 minutes I mean that's an hour out of my day right you can do 10 minutes you can do five minutes just pick up your instrument and play it it's really good and you will get slowly better no matter what I love playing um, this lead. Uh, in fact, I like to play it in B flat better than I like to play it uh, in the key that I was playing it in. You know, like this one right here. Let's see if I can play it again. Right? Uh, 
it's okay down there. I kind of like it higher. I like it there better. And sometimes I can work on something and do it for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just playing it and making sure that I'm getting the notes right. Or this part right here when I go, um, oh, where my, let me pull this up. When it goes like this, right there, like that. Let's see, it was the other one. That one's a little tricky right there. It's kind of a bluesy because that's the major third, minor third to major third. Those are actually uh, chord tones in the C chord. All chord tones in that C major chord. Here, let me uh, let me play the C major chord for you. Okay, there it goes. So, all these notes. Remember last week we talked about non-harmonic tones. That's what it was. Last week we talked about non-harmonic tones and how those relate to every, you know, to each other. And uh, so in the C chord, it's C, E, and G, right? Those three notes, C, E, G. So anytime you hit a C, let me turn that down. That's gonna go with your C chord. An E or a G. So if you know where those are, those are all chord tones that are going to sound good. Now that D, which is a ninth, for a second, I guess you could think of it. You hit that D, and then you go up. Or you hit the D and you go down. And that sounds fun. Or you hit the A and go down. Or you hit the A and go up to C. Or the B. Right? Or the F. Right? Anytime you hit a non harmonic tone, it wants to relax into a harmonic tone. I've got another camera going right here because I'm going to edit this and see if I can make another video out of it. I've got to reset that camera because it's going to turn off in just a second. Let me reach up there and do that. Because we're almost done, but not quite. All right, I'm back. There we go. Let's see here. Nigel says, how are you doing today? <laughs> uh, Jeff says, I really enjoy your videos. I play guitar because I knew it would be my lifelong passion ever since I saw Randy Bachman in BTO in 1976. I'm still playing and loving it, loving it more than ever. You know, I think all of us go through these um, periods where we play a lot and then we don't play and then we play a lot and we don't play. And I love taking, taking care of business. That's right. Um, this happens to everybody. It's just like if you've been to the ocean and you watch the waves come in and they go out and they come in and they go out and they come in and they go out, you realize that that's the way life is. Sometimes it gets busy and then it's not quite so busy and then it gets busy and then it's not quite so busy or we play and we don't play. We practice and we kind of back off. It's never usually um, a steady climb. You know, I mean, we can make, uh, when I was in college, I practiced every day except for maybe Sunday. Every day, two to three hours at least because that was my, uh, you know, when I was doing a piano performance major, it's because they didn't have a guitar major. So I did piano performance because I knew that piano was a good composition tool and I thought I might want to be um, a composer like John Williams or something like that. I mean, I actually thought about that. And uh, what do you want to do? You know, I, I discovered in the process of learning about that that that's not really what I wanted to do. It's like, oh, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons, you know, when you study guitar, 
uh, sometimes you're like, you know, I don't really want to work that hard. Like I, I started playing classical guitar, right? When, uh, back in 1987 and really studying it for a year or so. And I was like, you know, I don't, I don't really love classical as much as I love, you know, rock and pop and folk and singing and playing and that kind of thing. And so, you know, the things that I learned from the classical guitar was fantastic. It was great. Uh, I learned how to finger pick and that's where I got my finger picking technique and I modified it from classical. But I've learned a lot. But I decided, you know, I don't want to work that hard and it's not something I really want to do. Um, so, yes, you have to realize that we're going to play more or we're going to play less and just be good with that. Just be relaxed with that. And I love having a looper, you know, that I can play with. Here, let me, um, let me go back and I don't know, what should I play? Let's play another note, uh, another chord. Let's play a G chord. I think I need to tune my guitar again. Here, let's... Uh, and I was thinking the other day when I was editing a video that I had done and I had actually talked about notes. Maybe I should have talked about when we were talking about non-harmonic tones, maybe I should have gone through the chords that we were playing and talking about. Like the G chord has a G, B, and a D. So anytime you play a G, it's gonna sound good with that chord. Or a B, or a D. It doesn't matter where it is, you know, B, D, G, G. But of course, non-harmonic tones like A, Right? You can hear that that A note is a non-harmonic tone. You can go down to G, or you can go up to B. Now, you can do this by ear. You can uh, just play the guitar by ear, of course. And it's kind of like learning a language. You know, I can go to a different country like Mexico and learn the language. But if I don't learn how to read, then ever since I um, I go to... You know, like if I'm driving down the street or walking down the street and I see signs and I can't read them, then I, I don't know what's going on. <clears throat> so learning how to read music, learning about notes, things like that, it makes your experience more rich. Let's see what Nigel says. Nigel Mendoz, Mendoca, Mendon, Mendonca. Ever since I watched your video on Misty Mountains Cold and From the Hobbit, I fell in love with your channel. Thank you. Yeah, I figured that out. Um, yeah, you know, I think I remember you making a comment, Ni Nigel. It, it just seems like I think it was you. Because I several people, that Misty Mountains Cold from The Hobbit, that uh, video that I did, I know that several people, a bunch of people came on board during that time. That was a fun, fun video, wasn't it? Uh, if you have any... Uh, suggestions, you can email me at lessonswithhal at gmail.com. I've got a couple of spots for live lessons, you know, like online with somebody if you want to take lessons from me. I usually charge $50 an hour just to let you know. Um, of course, you don't have to do lessons. I mean, we can do this kind of a thing. I do a hangout right after this in just a few minutes. I'm going to hang out with my supporters. Now, my supporters are the Patreon people, the Subscribestar people, and the people that are on email list that make a donation to me through PayPal. Link in the description. Like this video, by the way, if you like the video. Like the video if you like the video. Um, and, you know, Mike, when you said if you learn the notes on the E and A string, it helps a lot. I have a video about that. Liking, learning the notes on the E string and on the A string can help you learn the notes all over the neck. It, just from the open to the 12th fret. Open to the 12th fret. Um, I think I think I've got a video that I did probably six years ago or something about if you learn those two notes, then it'll help you with your bar chords. It'll help you with your notes all over the guitar. It's really true because you can do octaves, you know, like, okay, this is a G, like you play a G, you got a G note right there. And then if you go up two frets over two strings, that's an octave, right? And that's a G too. Then if you go up three frets and over two strings, 
because when we go between the B string and the G string, we have to go up an extra fret. That's a G. So we can go. And a lot of times it's like, what note is this? I don't know. What is that? Oh, that's an F. Right? It's like, oh, yeah, it's an F. <laughs> so relationships and, and learning a few things on your guitar can relate to all kinds of stuff all over the neck. Let's see. Okay. I love it when you guys talk to each other, ask where you're from and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I'm going to take off. If you want to learn, you know, if you want to do like group lessons with me, and we kind of do that when we do the hangout. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It's not like, oh, you know, I got to spend a lot of money. No, I've got people there that give me, you know, $5 a month. Come and hang out with me. And, you know, they ask questions and I answer the questions. Or sometimes we just talk about stuff, <laughs> you know, when nobody has any, any big questions. But usually we get into things. I got people from the Netherlands and from Ohio here in the United States and from, let's see, southern Utah. Uh, people have come from Texas and from California and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've even had taught people from Australia and uh, Taiwan. Let's see, France. Got a student over in France. Uh, anyway, different places all over the world. Okay, it's great. Thank you very much for being here. I'm going to go and go hang out with my, my people, my supporters. Thanks for being here. And we'll talk to you soon. Maybe next week we'll do a song. You're welcome, Dermot. I'm not sure in Ireland if you're sad about the death of the queen, but uh, sorry to hear about her passing. It's very sad to me. All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for being here. Take care.